I've picked up a bit of an accent since I've arrived back in New Zealand, but unfortunately that accent has one of these, an engine, which despite my best efforts, I can't make work with New Zealand's fast charging network. This means I've had to do this, fill it up with petro fuels, and despite my best efforts using mobile phone apps and shopping around, the ultimate result is that it costs me an arm and a leg. But I think I found a solution to save money. As I sit here in Auckland traffic crawling along, I realise that my economy has been ruined, so I need to use the T2 lane, that express lane on the left. That would improve my economy greatly, but it means I need to find a passenger in the passenger seat. Yes, modern problems call for modern solutions, so I got busy trying to find an artificial person, and before you know it, this was the result. Behold, yes, at $10.50, I have purchased this cutting edge mannequin, so I finally have access to the T2 lanes on the motorway. I got busy dressing up my mannequin to make him look more human, ready for him to start his journey of saving me money. Unfortunately though, once I got him into the car, I realised that I had some problems. Not only would he not fit, but I found out it's completely illegal. But that's not the worst part. Not only did I catch him topless in my bed, or that I think he's an absolute pervert, but I'm getting really worried about his political leanings too. So I had him broken up and recycled, turned into something useful. In the meantime, I got the car in the garage and looked at legal ways that I could actually save money on my weekly gas bill. According to some automotive websites I've checked out, there are four things you can do to greatly improve your economy when you're driving a shitty internal combustion engine car instead of an electric car. The first thing is replace the air filter, which I'm going to do in just a few seconds. After that, the next best thing you can do is pump up the air in your tyres. Following that, reduce as much weight as you can from the car, and lastly, try not to use the air conditioning as much as possible. There is a fifth thing you can do, but I'll get to that later. First of all, let's replace the air filter. Replacing the air filter is actually a piece of cake. It's just dirty work. There's the old one. You can see the difference between the new filter and the old filter. One is absolutely filthy and brown deep down, and one is pristine and white. So, let's replace the air filter and see if that improves our economy. Replacing the air filter is not difficult, it takes about 10 minutes, but whether or not it makes a difference, we'll find out soon. Right now I'm heading to that gas station to put some air in my tyres. I'm going to go for 275 kilopascals, which in Roman Catholic is about 40 psi. Now that seems high, but it's still well below the safe uh, maximum operating pressure for these tyres. Right, so I'm going to drop this down to 40 psi, and let's get pumping. And there you go. That is four tyres filled up nicely. Now, let's try and reduce some weight. Cutting down on weight is easy. If you've got items of clothing that you're carrying around with you, get rid of them. You don't need to just carry that extra weight. It's burning gas. Same goes with things that are in the glove box that might just be weighing you down. Obviously, keep the important documents, but get rid of things like your spare dumbbell and perhaps your onion for a snack. And of course, the same goes for stuff in the boot. Get rid of any bulky, heavy items you might have. Personally, I'm getting rid of my biggest fan. Seriously though, if you are looking at cutting out weight, one great thing you can get rid of is your spare tire. This one has a full size spare tire, which is at least 10 kilograms in weight. So get rid of this, there's some extra savings. Worst case scenario, if I have a flat tire, all I've got to do is come back here to the garage to get it or someone can bring it to me. But if I'm going out of town, of course, I'll take all this stuff with me. That is a lot of saved weight right there. Now the next problem could be a little more difficult. Now, this is going to be a little bit more difficult because, unfortunately, Auckland is a subtropical city. It's the middle of summer right now, and today is 80% humidity. So, natural air conditioning, let's give it a shot. It's actually not too bad having the windows down so far. I'm still relatively fresh, and I do have my water bottle here, although you do hear the sound of diesel engines parked next to you at the lights more loudly, and of course you can smell them too. Ugh. I started off optimistic that maybe I could survive Auckland's humidity without using the air conditioning. Unfortunately, that optimism was soon drowned out by the sound of internal combustion. Okay, I'll be honest, it's not really very nice. Sound of engines all around me, the fumes, it's, it's really, and it's humid as hell, and, oh my god, ah, shut up, Jesus Christ. Oh, shut up, Jesus. 
Jesus, how is that legal? And it wasn't long before I was getting desperate. You know what, bugger it. Put the windows up, air conditioning, full blast. I've lost, I admit it, I've lost, but I've never been happier to fail a test than I am right now. Give me that sweet, sweet air conditioning. Oh my God. Yes, I failed that particular test, but I don't regret one minute turning that air conditioning back on. But over the next few days, I drove around to see if my modifications had actually made a difference. Well, it's now been a week since I've replaced the air filter and cut out some of the weight and pumped up the tires. I'm gonna pop into this gas station, fill up and see if it's made a difference in terms of economy. So I pulled into the nearest gas station, got out the lube and got ready to fork over megabucks to fill up the car. And after all that effort, did it actually work? Unfortunately, despite all my best efforts, my uh, initial air filter change and pumping up the tyres has not been very successful. I've had some of the worst economy I've had yet. But there are some other things you can do. There's another thing called hypermiling, which if you've had an electric car, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Driving so that you can maximise your range, or in the case of a shitty internal combustion engine car, driving so that you use as little fuel as possible. Now, the first thing you can do is own a manual transmission. Now I know that fewer than 5% of all cars in the USA are manuals or stick shifts, but if you get a manual transmission you can save approximately 15% more economy. Another thing you can do is to find that so-called happy range where your engine is not driving long at 30 miles an hour in 5th gear, blah, 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 struggling like this, or doing the same speed in 2nd gear, screaming like that. Try and find a happy medium to improve your economy. Another thing you can do, if you're stuck in the traffic like I am, turn your engine off. You can greatly improve your economy by not idling. If you think you're going to be stopped for longer than 10 seconds, it pays to turn off your engine. It's quiet too, it feels just like an electric car. Until you have to start it again. Another tip, keep your speed down. The most efficient speed for most infernal combustion engines is around 55 miles per hour or 90 kilometers per hour. As long as you stick to that speed and stay in the slow lane, you'll be laughing all the way to the bank. Or at least not crying all the way to the gas station. Okay, crying a little bit. Well, yeah, you're going to be crying. It's a gas car. Another thing you can do is drive preemptively. For example, I can see traffic slowing ahead, so I'm already slowing down, but keeping the car in gear. According to Popular Mechanics, if you are driving a modern fuel-injected vehicle and slowing down preemptively while keeping the car in gear, you are not burning any fuel. But wait, there's more. Another thing you can do to improve your economy is listen to relaxing music. Studies have shown that people who listen to aggressive music drive more aggressively, and people who listen to relaxing music drive in a more relaxed style. So put on some sweet tunes and relax. Of course, this tip goes without saying. Feather the accelerator. Accelerate slowly, decelerate slowly, and drive preemptively for the traffic conditions ahead. If you see cars slowing down 50 or 100 meters ahead, start slowing down already. Don't leave it until the car in front of you begins to slow down. Apparently there is one more thing you can do. It sounds ridiculous, but hypermiler.co.uk swears by it. Wearing softer, smaller shoes apparently lets you feel the accelerator more, and thus you drive in a more gentle way, feathering the accelerator. Personally, I like to wear my driving heels. So over the next few days, I'm going to put all of these tips into action to see if it really does reap the rewards in terms of gas saving. So watch this space. All right, it's been a few days. I've been hypermiling like mad, changing gear with like feather fingers, accelerating it very gently. Let's go to the gas station, fill up and calculate to see if it's all been worth it. The unwelcome sight of a gas station soon appeared in my windscreen and I got busy filling up the car and then calculated the mileage to see if it was all worthwhile Ugh. or not. Time to work out the gas savings now. I've just done 135 kilometers in this last test and I've used 6.23 liters to do that. So time to get out a little bit of mass. This is the part where the video slows down because I have to think. So it is uh, 6.23 divided by 135 k's or 1.35 equals far out 4.6 liters per 100 K which is very good economy especially for a car that's 18 years old but there is one thing you can do to even beat that and it's a secret not many people know about so follow me so I fired up the infernal combustion engine and visited a large shop which sell devices which allow you to either choose between hypermiling and weight reduction and playing soft boring music or you can just buy one of these an electric car 
For the cost of around three years worth of gas money, what you're already spending, you can buy an electric car and never have to visit the gas station again. Like, ever. Do it. All this effort for three second comedy clip. I can't believe I'm putting on women's shoes for this comedy skit. <laughs> that looks ridiculous! <laughs>